Happy New Year. Welcome to DaggerCast. It's me, Lindsay Charles. I am showered. I am moisturized. I am unbothered. Uh, and I hope that you guys have the same uh, energy going into 2024. I hope it's already just kicking ass for you. Um, this episode is going to be a little bit of a look backwards, uh, just kind of looking at our 2023, all the wonderful things that happened there. Um, and then also a little look forward. Um, resolution wise, all I have on my list is to meditate more. Oh, and um, my kid's turning four soon. So more patience. <laughs> That's, those are the only two things. Um, uh, I know that Skin and Marink is definitely in my top five of best movies of 2023. Might be the best, honestly. Um, nothing elicited a physical reaction from me like that movie did. And I am including Saltburn. Like, sure, he slurped up some jizzy bathwater. Yippee! Like, I don't know. It was good. I thought it was good. I just definitely don't think it was like the most devastating thing I've ever seen. Um, that was Um, uh, Anyway, my guest this uh, episode is one of the best. He's actually in every episode all the time. You just don't get to see him. It's our production manager and co-pilot and literally the glue that makes DaggerCast even happen, Jared Olson. Um, he is a wonderful musician, a uh, a music instructor. Um, he is in various bands uh, in Chicago. We played with um, one of his larger bands, uh, Elephant Gun. Um, he is uh, currently actively in a band called Post Child, also very wonderful that we've played with. Um, man knows how to do everything he knows how to songwrite he knows how to play guitar and drums and he's music is he is he is a very musical person um i i very much value his opinion in all things music as as well as all things this podcast so um honestly this thing wouldn't be running if it weren't for him um and of course we talk a lot about um you know our 2023 um, Departing Seniors, the the horror movie uh, that we both had a part in. He was the music. He was a musical supervisor in that. Um, in that, a music supervisor in that movie, um, as well as um, I got a, uh, the cell phones. My band got a song in it. Um, a, the trailer came out like last week, and our song is in the trailer, and I lost my mind. Um, cried a whole bunch. It was a very like wonderful moment. So Jared and I do talk a lot about. Uh, Departing Seniors. Also, if you want to stream this movie, uh, it will be available on Apple TV um, or on Apple, you know, that that Apple app where you get to watch stuff. It'll be on that available uh, starting February 2nd. Very excited uh, to actually finally see the movie. Um, some people have already seen it and they tell me that it's it's really great. So I'm super pumped and excited to watch it from the comfort of my home. Um, so yeah, we do talk about Departing Seniors quite a lot in the show um, because it was such a big, big old chunk of our 2023, lots of contracts to sign. Um, uh, and then in 2024, who knows? Um, I would love to get uh, your opinion. If you know uh, of someone who would love to talk about horror with me, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, if it's you, uh, let's do it. I don't care. I literally, you don't need to have anything going on for me to talk to you about horror films. So hit me up, please. Um, we're on all the socials. Uh, DaggerCastInfo at gmail.com is where you can find us. And um, yeah, here's the episode. Enjoy yourself. This is a, a little peek behind the curtain. Um, but happy to be here. Yeah, it's good to have you because you are the literal glue that puts that keeps this together. Like, I don't know, you're you're a treasure to me, Jared. Oh, you as well. And you know what? Total team effort since right. Then. Yeah. I just love, I don't know. I feel like we've been like, I don't know, we haven't stressed each other out too much. Um, we haven't made this something that feels like a chore. Um, and I really appreciate that. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Everybody and their grandma has a freaking podcast and I'm just kind of glad that this one gets to kind of 
be what I get to do every now and again. Just have a chat with people who like horror. Like, and so you you facilitate this completely. So I appreciate you. Oh, absolutely. I appreciate you as well. And you know what I've I've had a lot of fun working on this show. Um, when I first got into it, I didn't really like listen to a whole lot of podcasts. Uh, I listen to a lot of Mark Marin because he's like the number one, right? And he always has like these deep conversations with all these guests. And uh, and I feel like he, I, I honestly feel like he blew open the podcast in a way that we weren't like ready for yet. That and cereal, like it's kind of crazy. Like now podcasts are literally like half of my uh instagram stories or reels or whatever or even pod like even tiktoks are just people like talking in microphones with each other like sitting in a couch like sitting in a chair but the mic's right here and i'm just like that's where we are like there are people who will do like parodies where they'll like say things like uh i don't know they'll just be like uh you have twenty thousand dollars uh put ten thousand dollars of that in a in 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 the bank you have thirty thousand dollars now and like people are like mm -hmm, interesting and they just are like completely like messing up like being like isn't that interesting like <laughs> there's a there's literally a podcast about anything nowadays yeah um it's it's interesting i tend to like the ones with guests um where somebody's interviewed right or like it's like a conversation and that's what drew me into it and this world was um the uncensored like depth of it and like the the not a lot of regulation which is kind of exciting like it um and it's still like that um but it was really just a dare honestly from my brother um mm. because he listened to a lot of podcasts and i really wasn't as i said and occasionally he'd listen to one i'd be like yeah, this, this kind of sounds like shit you yeah. know like i would tell him that we'd be like i can't even hear this guest this guy's like loud as hell. Like this guest is like soft as hell. Like the mix is terrible. So yeah, the musician in you was just like, oh, get a tweak, get a <laughs> yeah. This mix sucks. Where's the compression? So <laughs> I, you know, I was I was basically like talking shit on some stuff, and uh, and he was like, well, why don't you start a podcast? Ooh. And as like a brotherly dare, I was like, well, maybe I will, right? Um, and then at the time, I was working with Brian Kirst, uh, mm -hmm. our original uh host along with you um and he just had already done a lot of hosting and we had talked a lot about horror films and um you know came up with this idea to talk to chicago actors and musicians and bridge this gap between music and film and stage acting and all this cool stuff so um and brian just knew all these people and then uh we were like who who can be the the other host right and then he brought you up and we brought you in since day one, basically. Wow. And it's like, right. It was just kind of like this funny dare by my brother and me being like, you know what, Brian would be a great podcast host. And I know he had already done it. And then him being like, you know, I want a great woman to host the show with me. And then him suggesting you and you being like, hell yeah, let's do this. And it all coming together. Um, and now we're like 45, 50 episodes in which is pretty wow. cool for like a, you know, just a podcast where we're just doing it for the fun of it. We've never really had a huge sponsor or anything like that. Um, so it's been fun. Yeah. It's been fun. I even know where I would. Yeah. I, I I'm super happy about it. Um, yeah, it's just been really nice. Um, it's also made me feel kind of like sky's the limit, you know, it's almost like everyone's talking. And it kind of doesn't matter who's listening. It's just a cool thing to do. Um, I think for a while, like we were kind of like, oh no, like, you know, how do we get people to like listen to this more? And like, I don't know. I feel like every now and then somebody will bring up like, oh yeah, you guys talked about this or that. And I'm just like, oh, thank goodness. Somebody, somebody heard it. But honestly, like, yeah. I, I'm so like, I'm so in my, like, I'm in my home right now. I I haven't left my house at all day today. I work from home. Same. The only other person who's, like, into talking about this kind of shit is my husband, is Ryan, who's making the most noise he possibly could <laughs> in the kitchen. 
Um, I can't even hear them. So thanks. oh, good, thank goodness, because so all much. I hear is just like <laughs> sink. Zoom compression. Um, thank you. But exactly, it's like I think like we were doing this up until the pandemic, and yeah. we did this through my pregnancy. We did this right after my pregnancy, and then. I was in Indianapolis, just moved away, and it was like, oh no, am I ever going to do anything like this again? And then running into freaking Coy Lloyd, um, who is a lovely Indianapolis lady, who I believe is going to go get her master's or something. Like she's, awesome. yeah, yeah. And like, oh, I mean, if it's in film, I think it's in film, I'm not sure. But um, that's awesome. Seeing yeah, her and just talking to other people that I was like, oh man, it would be so interesting to talk to you. Like, I was like, let's try, like, let's try this again. And, um, I do miss Brian. I really do. I miss his, uh, I miss his encyclopedia knowledge of all things horror. Um, I miss his, like, you know, even, even the current stuff he was always, oh yeah, I saw that. Like, oh, I've seen that. And I was like, oh, you, you Brian know. Brian is not only like a horror historian, he is a film historian. Like, mm -hmm. he knows about so many different genres of film. So, yeah. Yeah. He was, he was. I call him up during an episode, you know. We should have a call Brian moment. Like, no. Yeah, like, please call Brian. Or we should, like, have a segment um, at some point where we just go, hey, we talked about the following things tell me more about this. Like, we want to know more about, like, expound to me about, like, I don't know, we talked to Haley recently about full core. I'd love to hear what he has to say, honestly. Yeah. Like, I miss, I miss his take. I miss his knowledge, for sure. But, yeah. um, but you as I, well are also basically a film historian and a I mean, actor and a stage musician and all these great things, right? So, Bravo holding down the show after Thank Brian you. Hall. I was yeah. I'm not not gonna lie, I was very nervous taking uh hosting solo, but um I think I've I don't know, I'm just been trying to play to my strengths, which is um talk with mouth loud no. say word like and um that's a great episodes and yeah, uh, and uh I, I would like to talk about some of the guests we've had. Going backwards, I just I've I'm really excited that we've been able to talk to so many musicians, um, mostly Chicago musicians. Um, I love that we've been able to talk to we've been talking to people on the West Coast quite a bit lately. Um yeah, yeah. like people from all over, like literally people who I know as friends, but also people I don't know at all. Um, so that's been a lot like that's been fun. I I, I really think in the future I wanna keep just like no one is off limits honestly like right. any old person can be on this podcast as long as they're like oh i'm into horror like and they know a thing or two about it right and yeah or even yeah. if they don't like i just i really want to know where they're coming from like i think just to say i like horror to me is is a big statement because it's not something you would say to your grandma. It's not something that you would like admit to someone on a first date unless you knew that they would be cool with like, you know, like it's kind of one of those things like it's a genre that people either are into or they're like, oh, I don't do that. Yeah, it, when when I say that I'm into that genre, it either like clicks with the person or the person goes, Ooh, and they, they don't understand, like, why would you spend your time watching things that scare you, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and when they just want to, like, laugh or, and to me, and I'll, I've said it to my wife, you know, it's like, it's just a very safe thrill ride in your home. Um, yeah. Much like it's a roller like, coaster. And it'll honestly, make, make you think or whatever. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, so. I also think I'm really old in the sense that I am, I'm, I, I have no patience for a certain kind of person and those certain kinds of people are people who don't understand horror don't understand what the point of it is like to me i'm like you're not even trying like you're not even like challenging yourself to try and also people who tell me that oh i don't watch cartoons because uh, th those are for kids totally and i think a lot of that comes to facing fears right and and you know 
horror movies will put your fears in front of you. You know, I know you're a cat owner. I'm a cat owner. They kill the cat, you know, and we watch the cat die in the movie and we just go, oh God, right? Or I broke a bone when I was a kid and, you know, a bone breaks in a movie and I go, oh God. Or the needles. noise. Oof. Yeah. Or the needles like, oh, for always make me cringe. And it, it's, it's about facing fears and sometimes that's just not for people. <laughs> You it's know. true. I mean, I feel like there have been a couple of times, like I remember watching um, the new Evil Dead movie because somebody was, was somebody was into it. I think it was the Arius brothers were were talking about it. So I watched it um, and I remember like there were a couple of moments where I was like, mm -mm, like because it was just too like slippery, sloppity gore. Um, yeah, there's been a couple too like, brutal. yeah, there have been a couple like movies like that that have just been like extra creepy um but yeah I, I i just feel like uh i don't have time for people who say they're or it's like oh horror is not my thing and here's why it's like i want to know like don't just like say Ugh, horror gross right because horror like we've discussed or you've discussed in shows can be really anything right like things that aren't even meant to be scary can be scary sometimes so mm -hmm. I think that people, I don't know, I think, once again, it goes to facing fears. And if I say I'm into that genre and the other person doesn't, it, there's like some sort of like, it just doesn't click, right? It's like, yeah. and it, chances are it's, you know, I mean, my wife and I first bonded over horror films. We watched like Evil Dead at like our second date, right? Aww. And, and I've kind of worn her out on them a little bit, you know, she needs breaks sometimes because it's mm -hmm. literally all I usually want to watch. Um, but she's gotten yeah. me into other genres, um, but occasionally she doesn't want to watch it, right? And and I understand, um, but she's also experienced it. And we clicked because we watched scary movies on like our second date or whatever. Um, but I can understand, as I say, how some people just don't want to see, like, talk to me right that has some and excruciatingly brutal violent scenes in it um that to me really moved me because it, you know of how just incredibly brutally violent it was um and self-inflicting and also like you know what scenes i'm talking about i don't want to mm -hmm. spoil too much but you know the scene where basically the kid is slamming its head against the yeah dude that was that was very uh it was like the worst person for it to happen to and so it was just like right. yeah it was like it was that mixed with just like really like the kid who's just the youngest and the most vulnerable really like it um also the only uh when whenever i think of talk to me the only mi image that i get is that woman sucking on that dude's feet <laughs> the girl just go like and he's like you were just like slurping on my feet she's like no that wasn't me that was such a strange scene but i guess it kind yeah. of got into the movie and the surrealness of it but there were the ending, that movie. To, me, to me the ending was the most beautiful like it was very like you understood what was going on even though it didn't make any sense like yeah it was a i watched it twice last year mm -hmm. you know and um once by myself and once with my wife and <clears throat> there were scenes as i was saying you know where i'm like i could understand why no one would want to watch this yeah I mean, but then again to that person that maybe doesn't want to watch talk to me it's like come on you don't want to watch gremlins during christmas yeah. like come on like you're gonna sit and tell me gremlins is too scary for you or like you you just can't even like watch the the old ones like even though, yeah like to know. me like i don't know it it's interesting because i the the only people i can think of off the top of my head who will like not watch horror or like people who have like extremely vivid dreams so it's like yeah sure i understand that maybe you don't want to see horror because it'll make you have nightmares but it's also like maybe you should figure that out <laughs> like there's maybe a reason why you're yeah maybe um, you need to, to ch or uh process some things safely um through stories yeah. that make you feel differently i don't know yeah I mean, to me like uh horror is a kind of catharsis and i feel like when a movie puts you through a journey like you're a better person for it and um absolutely 
there have been so many movies that have like really like when i saw the first paranormal activity with a group like i'll never forget that i I talk about it all the time like it we all were fin like we were all different when we came out of that because it was a movie that no one had ever made a movie like that and everybody was just so like oh my god that rocked me and there wasn't even really a much of a cast much of a ghost right but you walk out of that theater into the real world again and that that mm -hmm. feeling where that movie like really took you somewhere strange and freaky and um out of your head a little bit you know like oh thing to me a lot of it's like i love like really fucked up shit sometimes right because it's like oh my life could possibly get that strange or that eerie like <sighs> It, it 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 makes my life seem abundant and beautiful and mm -hmm. you know it it it's much like having a nightmare and waking up and going oh thank the fuck god that was a nightmare yeah like, like thank god that's not how life is right now because i always have dreams and and honestly like nine times out of ten i will have a dream and it will be very realistic and something will be, something bad will happen to me like an arm gets broken or I don't know, I get caught like stealing something or, oh, I've, I've recently I've been having dreams where I have to uh, understudy for someone and I don't know any of the words of the play. And, and it's like absolutely terrifying. And when I wake up, I'm like, oh, thank God, like I'm not. But I always like the back of my mind is like, did I just interdimensional travel? Is that the is that a me in another in another like multiverse? Dreams like are trippy. having they a are. having a shitty time like and it's so funny because yeah. sometimes even like i don't know i feel like dreaming makes me feel the most like this is a simulation because sometimes i'll i'll like I'll, I'll lay down for a 20 minute nap i will have an insane crazy amount of visions in 20 minutes it's like my body went like one two three rem like and i wake up and i'm like what Wait, how many what? Like, how long was I asleep? And it's like 20 minutes. And I'm like, that felt like three hours. And it's like things like that, like being unconscious sometimes makes me think like, what is going on? And There's we don't really know. We don't know how we, we don't know how we become unconscious or why. Right. And that's why, you know, I, I think manifesting is real, too, because dreams and manifestation and that, that stuff is all like very powerful. Um, and uh, yeah, I've had, you know, many, many, we could talk about dreams for hours, probably. I was about to say, I know, is, uh, is are we also the dream warriors? Um. <laughs> dreaming is, it, it is a, just a, a trippy thing and also scary. It, it's mm -hmm. terrifying. Um, and I, going back to having, you know, dreams that can last like 20 minutes that are, feel like they're hours, like, mm -hmm that time expansion and that uh, it's just, it doesn't make sense. We can't make any sense out of it. And no, and it's literally like something our body does every single day. Like it's, it's absolutely crazy to me. Um, it's scarier to me than scary movies. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes, yeah. I mean, even Ryan has told me he'll like, he'll wake up and he'll be like, Oh, I'm like, what? And he was like, I had a weird dream. Or like sometimes I'll wake up like if I take different certain kinds of medications, I'll have just like blood dreams where everything is red, and I'll just be like, huh, uh, one of them, one of them creepy blood dreams. Okay, cool. Moving yeah, on. That, like, do you have reoccurring dreams? No, I don't really have anything reoccurring. I don't think I have a lot of like the same cast of characters sometimes show up. That's pretty cool. That's yeah, so it'll be like the same people will show up or like. Ryan will show up a lot. Um, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but anyway, yeah. Um, anyway, dreams, dreams. I right? Also, I don't think up, we've, right? I don't think I've asked you this question, but what was your first horror movie? You know, I knew you were going to ask me this, Lindsay. <laughs> um, so I was thinking, I was like going back into my childhood, right? And well, <clears throat> I had an uncle, uh, rest in peace, he passed away. Great musician, folk musician, also, um, horror movie lover and ghost storyteller, right? So he, he would act out ghost stories when we were kids on Halloween and he was very, very much so a showman and introduced me to a lot of cool stuff. 
I don't know if he was the first one to show me a scary movie, but he was the one that had the vibe about him and the family, you know, where you're like, he had all the VHS tapes and all the, the weird shit in his house and, you know. Hi, Ryan. Cheers. Hey, Jared. <laughs> Did you hear him? Yeah, I heard him, yeah. Dur, dur. Zoom didn't cut him out. God, that compression's wild. He doesn't want to, he doesn't, he doesn't want to be on screen because he's wearing a sweater that says world's sluttiest dad. <laughs> Way to call him out. I mean, <laughs> I bought him that shirt. I demand. I demand everyone know it. It exists. Uh, um, that's compliment. really cool. That's such but, a cool like person to have in your life. Like that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. He taught me guitar. You know, he showed me the first things on guitar. Like he was hell just yeah, fucking cool guy. And uh, but honestly, you know, as a white kid from the suburbs, literally like <laughs> Ghostbusters, of course, was like huge for me um but really like the never-ending story the dark crystal I'm, i wrote down a few both uh, of, both of the house movies um oh okay yeah you know, house and house two love mm -hmm. those i remember like the the ding dong you're dead like mm -hmm. you little, the, little, right little <laughs> severed hand me being like what is that movie and having to rent it because it was not our I, I remember seeing that in new, I remember seeing that in uh in video stores like and being like what is this and my and mommy we're not live. getting that. Yeah. But yeah, like you know ET you know the scene where Elliot like throws the ball into the shed and then the ball comes out of the shed that is like pure horror material. <laughs> you know as a kid you're like this is terrifying. Um a lot of the small monster stuff like gremlins critters mm -hmm. um, anything that was small i like you know some people love godzilla i'm like i like the little monsters like i always felt that they were creepier like oh that thing could like hide in my cabinet and like like munchy Mun munchies right, right? right. uh the right. gate Hi. i recently watched munchy and i was just like what is going on oh i think it was an mst3k thing it was very munchy silly. doesn't make a whole lot of sense from what i remember um it's but I love like the gate is a great one, you know, ghoulies, like, mm -hmm. I think it was uh, going back to previous guests, I think it was Bev, uh, who loves those movies as well. Yeah, yes. yeah I think it was. Yeah. Um, um, well, it's funny, because basically what you're describing movie wise is gateway, is gateway horror, because yeah. it's basically like, so, and, and, and you said earlier, you wanted to touch on this. Um, but that's exactly why, because you like that's obviously where where you come from, you know, horror wise. And um, I feel like 2023 has been a really good year for gateway horror in general. Um, and not not even just like for for kids, but for like. For the I don't know, for the TikTok generation. Um, uh like we had the grimace shake phenomenon which was like to me it was it was a gift it was like this this amazing gift that like everyone could do it's like you could make a grimace shake video yourself um and it only you know the the better it got was just <laughs> i like I feel like everyone, like everyone was just limited to their own imaginations. So you got a whole bunch of like bros together to do these crazy tableaus of, of death. <laughs> and it's like, either you, you know, either it was pretty chill or whatever, or you got weird. And so many, um, I don't know. It was just so, it was cool. I just loved seeing everyone become a filmmaker for a little bit, just for like, a little bit yeah you know i feel like kids are back into being scared again like i think mm -hmm. um you know we're around the same age like growing up in the 80s and 90s like kids liked being scared back then you know going back to that it's like we liked it it was going back to like the rush thing like oh this is going to be like a fun night we're going to get a scary movie and and i think kids are starting to get back to that a little bit and i think that the content that was coming out for a while was a little fluffy for kids and I think now yeah. they're trying, they're, t they're testing it again, which I think is well, really cool. And I also think that a lot of the, you know, a lot of the movies that were coming out this year just really weren't, 
either you were like in the high art zone like infinity pool like that was that was terrifying but it was also like no kids gonna be watching that right. it was extremely insane um yeah, no kids gonna be watching that no I have no kid will be watching that I would not um you had but then you also had like the scream series that just is it it won't stop it just keeps going um the latest one was bad i never saw it the latest one was so bad and the only good thing that came out of it was that courtney cox finally died because at this point she can't act she's got too much botox in her face like it was (sighs) it was so hard to see her be like what's wrong oh my god i am so scared wait i'm so scared like it was so like Oh, no, it was it was so awful, and it made me really upset. So when she all finally, the friends, like Jennifer Aniston, was like the only one to really turn out okay. I don't know. Lisa Kudrow looks all right. Oh, does she? <laughs> I mean, right. as far as like you know, keeping her shit together. No, Courtney Cox has has I don't know. Well, like she needs to. She must be stopped. Oh, um, hey. What else? Like, and, and also, um, also, what a wonderful turn of events. Scream was not a. It was such a mid movie, and yet. And yet now, like the lead girl on that got kicked out because of her, because of her uh, pro-Palestine posts. And, and Jenna Ortega uh, left that production even before that happened. So there was yeah. trouble going on. Yeah, I think Jenna Ortega probably saw what was going on and saw that they were going to fire her and was like, oh, I'm sorry, due to scheduling issues, I cannot make it. Like, yeah, oh, oh, I'm feeling um, this one. <laughs> yeah, we all were like, ooh, like, because also it's like, Lost a lot of I, I don't. Like sure, you can make you can make scream again if you want, but what's the point? Like just let it let it die, let it go to bed. Let yeah, like let it open up a new a new generation of, of yeah of let high Sydney, school like slashers. Let, you know, let Sydney have her life. Okay, like right, right. Let like, her be. Stop stabbing it to death. Yeah. So <laughs> I feel like I also um another big gateway thing that I've been noticing um online. It's not necessarily a horror movie. But it's called like liminal space mm. where people like create weird environments. Like right. a, like you a, know, I, I just, it, this is a TikTok thing. Kind of. It's like, I've been, I've been watching, like we just watch, we'll watch like YouTube videos of just compilations of them. And it's okay. just like, oh, I, I'm in a weird grocery store. I can't find the door. And it just, is like a grocery store that goes on forever. And then like slowly just weird shit starts to happen in it. Oh, you should send me a few links because I will. I'm that that stuff freaks me out. Man. Yeah, it's super. It's it's like really like I don't know. It's like people obviously trying to kind of make. It's almost like people trying to make like Silent Hill, like like Silent Hill and like Resident Evil. How those like like I loved watching. I love watching video games because I get scared. Um, yeah. my entire yeah, opinion, like like right uh. uh Olive's whole first half year of life was us either watching alien movies or playing alien isolation, like in the dark, like just rocking her to sleep. It's and, funny you brought up alien. Cause I just watched aliens and was reminded how badass that fucking movie so is. badass. It, it's it got so much like feminine power. It's just such a great movie. Anyway, get away from her. You bitch. Yeah. I, uh, when when we were all uh, stuck in the pandemic, I cut my hair like Ripley, and then I was like, "Oh, I did that really wrong," and then all my hair fell out anyway, so it didn't matter. Um, <laughs> postpartum. Great. Oh, yeah, she's like, well, yeah, but yeah, like to have it as well. Yeah, to me, like video games, like scary video games, gateway. Um, mm-hmm. Five Nights at Freddy's, also a video game, had a great movie. Massive. Yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, it wasn't a good movie, but it was a great vehicle to watch Matthew Lillard. Yeah, they could have pushed it, they could have pushed it a little harder in there, you know, like, I, I felt like they could have gotten away with a little more, like, you know, if, it was good, though, for what it was, the mm-hmm. visuals were creepy, and uh, kids, like, all my students loved it, like, they were, it, it really delivered. To, yeah, like, it was very, it, to me, it was a very straightforward Ryan was like, this could have been a Goosebumps. And I'm like, yeah, it could have been a Goosebumps. Like, I feel like Five Nights at Freddy's would just be one really good end of season spectacular Goosebumps episode. Um, speaking of which, like more gateway, the Goosebumps reboot 
on Disney was surprisingly entertaining. Oh, I did not. Uh, I actually didn't watch it yet. Ryan, did you? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm assuming he's in the other room and that can answer my question. But but you know, it's it. got Justin Long, who you know, I, I love Justin. Oh Long. yeah, and um, he's great in it. And it's it's got like the tweeny drama thing, but it's it's really um, quite scary in parts, and they really like really push the envelope, I guess, or whatever. Um, mm -hmm more so than five nights at freddy's did it's like the sim similar gateway but pushed a little harder in the goosebumps world yeah i feel like now that we we can also say stranger things gateway there you um yeah because it's you know it's literally the foundations of stranger things are built in all of the movies you know it's very goonies et like adjacent yeah. you know like it has it has the scary visuals and it's just enough to spook spook you out but like it's not gonna, mm -hmm. it's not and the <laughs> netflix had the fear street uh as well the fear street movies that were like they were like kind of like big episode slash movies or two-parters or three-parters i don't know we watched a couple and they were not bad but they certainly were not a fear street book i used to read those like Same. candy um yeah I, I wasn't super impressed with those they were all right they kind yeah of... i liked just the i don't know i just liked it was to me it was like an easy way to put like different characters of different races and types and orientations so that was cool but it was also kind of like yeah it really wasn't saying much in when you put it all together right um, right but yeah i'm i like to me, like, Skinnamarink fits very, very firmly to me in, in, in a gateway, like, where people are, like, there isn't much going on in Skinnamarink, but that makes it even scarier. And I feel like the filmmakers of today are kind of realizing that you know film is a wonderful medium and you can do so much with it but really like you are only limited by your imagination you could literally like you don't have to spend thousands of dollars doing something you can just you can just like film a wall and and somehow it is terrifying or like i don't know it just it was very like powerful to me also the fisher price clock will never be the same i do not like it and i do not want it in my house and i think i did get rid of the one that olive had um yeah it i don't belong in my house you know i have not seen skin of a rink and i'm going to watch it tonight uh per <laughs> Good basically luck. because you you've told me it's your favorite film of 2023 basically i would say i mean honestly i don't even know necessarily if it's like my favorite movie i mean i just saw poor things i'm still processing it uh -huh. okay. very I've, good I've very good that. movie okay. um kind of like kind of a frankenstein situation but not necessarily i don't know but um cool, cool. i'll check it out I, to me like skinner rank skinner rank made me scream audibly in a theater um i i was sweating and i was like is it just hot in here or am i afraid um and it was very quiet like it was just so it was kind of like a i don't know just it was an experience and in that way i was like okay movie of the year also i if i want to throw out a couple others that i really enjoyed was uh i don't know how you say it huesra husera the bone woman which mm. is basically about it's like about a woman who's pregnant and kind of about like how her body is changing and um a lot of a lot of bone cracking noises a lot of mm. bone click yeah you'd be you'd be terrified but it's like a again i think it's a spanish language film and just a lot of spanish language films are up on the top of every person's best horror um this year uh there's another one that ryan and i really want to see called when evil lurks i've heard of that yeah I mean, yeah it's, it's supposed to be one of the very best um of the year there's one called the wailing that I, I i mentioned in my episode with Haley. um but yeah there's just been i know that i know that a lot of horror has missed me same, but same. but uh i i do feel like i saw a couple really good ones but skin and rink was was up there with just like 
what the hell is this? Like, it just was like, yeah, I think I, my first thought was like, who hurt this man? Who hurt the filmmaker? <laughs> I don't want, like, I was like, I have a kid now. Like, I don't want my kid to be thinking anything like that. Like, yeah, I've had that thought of directors like, wow, what, what? what's going on in your mind and I hope right? it's out of your mind after you made that film like you know, oh. when you watch like somebody like Quentin Tarantino you're just like oh you were just thinking about feet <laughs> that's it and then I think I don't know if the director of Skin and edited that but then I think about the editing process and I go that person just had to stare at those visuals for like eight hours a day for like, you know, a month straight. And then the composer, you know, has to sit and stare at those visuals, you know, oh, all man. it's just, they're saturating their minds with those like very creepy visuals in that film. And I haven't even seen it, but I've dialed it up and kind of spoiled it a little bit for myself. But, um, you know, it, it reminds me and I can't wait to watch it, but it reminds me of like back in the nineties when you were really just bored and you had nothing to look at. So you just kind of look around the room. And I don't know if you remember doing this, but I did. I'd just be like really bored, like ADD kid or something. And I'd be like looking around the room, staring at corners or letting my mind wander at night outside dark windows. Um, that's what this movie reminds me of. And that's why I think I'm going to like it a lot. Um, yeah, anyway, I don't want to spoil it anymore for myself. Yeah, here I'm gonna I'm gonna just tell a, a, a brief story about what my kid is afraid of. Um, Olive, I, Olive wants to do yoga with me, and when I'm doing yoga, it's like don't bother me. I'm, I'm, I'm in my inner peace. This is my time. But she always wants to do yoga with me, so I'm like, oh, let's put on a kid yoga yeah. on YouTube, and I found one that was uh, Paw Patrol. She loves Paw Patrol. So I was like, Paw Patrol Yoga, check it out. And um, I found one and it was a woman named Miss Linky. And it wasn't necessarily yoga. It was more of like a, let's exercise and do a weird thing. But she at first is like an old lady and a bad guy comes out with like, you know, he's wearing the little bandit mask and he's wearing black. And he's like, ha ha ha. And he takes a woman's purse and she goes, stop, somebody took my purse. And Olive was petrified of this man. This tiny, I mean, honestly, we were watching a tiny screen on the floor, little man stealing a woman's purse. And she's like behind me, like. Maybe he like reminded her of something that she saw. I don't, well, she just like. In real life or something. She's really fascinated by bad guys. So like. It's so funny because, yeah, like an evil queen or an evil witch in a story about, you know, unicorns. I'm like, yeah, that's the bad guy. Right. right. But it's like she's never like, like she's fascinated with the bad guy. Like sometimes she'll pretend to be the bad guy and say, <laughs> I am a bad guy. And I'll be like, oh, no. And she'll like <laughs> grab my face. And I'll be like, ow, that hurts. Right. But so she, she, so she understands that it's a character. Yeah, yeah, she understands it's a character, but it was so. Right. But because of that, I was like, "Really, you are so scared of this tiny man?" And he would literally just be in the background, like, hey, 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 hey. and she'd be like, "There he is!" <laughs> like, and then we would have to run to catch him. And so then there were like obstacles in the way, so we'd move to the right, we'd move to the left, we'd jump, we'd, and that's like what the video was doing. But she, anytime the bad guy would show up, she would like, I gave her my yoga mat. I was like, yeah. "Use my yoga mat." And she would like, she'd be underneath me, like. Going going back to you never know what really is horror, right? It's right, like, yeah. <laughs> like, it, like I, I remember my brother being young and being like, I want to watch uh, Harry Potter 3. And I was like, dude, no, no, we're not doing that. And he was like, no, 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 I, I've watched one and two. And I'm like, no, 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 no. This one's got dementors. They're kind of scary looking. And I think you'll have nightmares. Mm -hmm. I know you. And I think you will have nightmares he's like no 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 i'll be super cool ma i'll be super cool yeah. i'll be so I'll, I'll be the best no worries yeah. and my mom wasn't home so i was just like all right i'll put it on and he had nightmares for months <laughs> nightmares for months and i felt so bad my mom was like how dare you and i'm like i'm sorry he said he would be cool with it yeah. so yeah harry no. potter dementors 
uh harry potter the 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 book that was written by anonymous um anonymous. those are scary gateway yeah absolutely yeah i mean that fantasy stuff right and i was just gonna give you the uh the the warning because i usually you know in the middle of our episode i send you a text but we're a little Dude, over and i like literally never see it and i then look at it <laughs> later and i'm like i'm a dumbass so i got staring at it like i should probably uh you know but uh, but no this is i i still as you know i said when we dialed into this episode, like I still love watching stuff that's made for kids, especially if it's done well. Um, and one of just one other thing I wanted to mention that I thought was great this year uh, was the Secrets of the Mogwai um, cartoon on Max. Whoa, is, I did not know. A final extension of the Gremlins universe, uh, which going back to I, I love Gremlins um, and it, they did such a wonderful job and actually they um it was overseen by both spielberg and dante right so like they had both those guys like overseeing the whole thing so it has Perfect. the right vibe and also really pushes boundaries for kids um some scenes in it are just straight up kind of brutal uh cartoonish violence <laughs> like they kind of like you know when cartoons used to be really violent <laughs> mm -hmm. like they're kind of like bringing that back into this, that like cartoonish violence and some pretty terrifying imagery as well as like super cute voice acting and super adorable story and tons of cute little mogwais and hmm. great to watch with Olive. She cool. might, or uh, she'd probably like it. Yeah, if she, <laughs> if she knows what the bad guy is, because there's a bad guy, but I think it's once again, like, you know, back to Gateway like that that was a huge one that i really enjoyed this year uh with or without kid i think it's awesome nice <laughs> if, um, if you love the gremlins films yeah i will yeah ryan is kind of a gremlins aficionado um That's he's awesome. a household but he hasn't brought that up though but we've also been really occupied on max we've been watching scavengers reign mm, i have not oh seen that. jared i i highly recommend it writing it down. like scavengers reign r-e-i-g-n it is heartbreaking. It is fascinating. It is visual. It is terrifying. Um, not necessarily, you know, if I put it in horror, but it is, it's, it's basically like a freighter ship explodes over a planet and the survivors um, just have to find a way out. Um, and it's, so it's kind of like a little dismal, a little like maybe like Chernobyl, like that kind of, no, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if I would, I don't know, though, it's, it's different. It's, it's very different, because you're basically like watching a whole planet have a whole different life. But there are these episodes where you watch like very granularly see like, the way the planet works, or the way that the creatures work on the planet. And mm -hmm. then you and then there's like ones where you follow the history of you know, sometimes you go back to the ship and, and it shows you kind of why the ship exploded and stuff like that. Um, it's amazing. It's such a trip. It's such that an absolute awesome. trip. Yeah, um, I'll check we that just, out. Yeah, we just finished it. The music is flawless. Like, I, I yeah, I can't talk more highly about it and I'm probably going to bring it up in the intro too and be like, hey guys, just uh, I'm going to remind you. Check this um, out. Yeah, it's oh. really good. Um, what else did I want to we don't have much time but i wanted to right the, i want to at least briefly kind of go over uh, the good you know all the stuff that kind of happened this year and really the big thing was departing seniors like i can't believe that this happened and it happened like around i feel like i feel like something big swept us up like in its orbit for a minute it was really cool to be a part of all of that and it's still like still got to be released to the the public right like you mm -hmm, haven't mm -hmm. seen it yet um i was i was lucky to see it um right you were at the music box right for the chicago premiere yeah yeah very it's cool. it's a great film i can't wait for everybody to see it it's it's very funny um i will i will say it, it hits the horror comedy thing like perfect right, right on the button and, and i'm myself. really excited i'm oh, i'm really I'm proud of everybody. I'm really proud of Jose. Like, I can't believe, I just, I'm so happy that we got to be a part of it. And it wasn't even like, it was just kind of like, we're inter we're interviewing Jose. 
he's like, oh, we need music help. And we were like, we'll help. And then suddenly, like, Jerry says, suddenly you're a musical director. You know, you're like. Uh, that was a like, wild thing. And that's, I mean, that I think had a lot to do with how Claire directed it and how she went about putting the team together, right? And mm -hmm. Jose definitely, like, brought us to the table as far as like just needing Chicago music and mm -hmm. it, was, it was just like hey let's put a meeting together and tell us about some cool Chicago bands so now you're music supervisors so it was it was cool for them to like bring us aboard in that very surprising way like we weren't applying for the job yeah but we got a job right so that was fun um well and I also think like I mean I, I it's so funny because I think a lot of people have been like, oh man, your music's in a movie, huh? Like you're raking in the big bucks. I'm like, absolutely not, my friend. I gave that to them for free ninety nine. Like right, as as we all did, right? Like it was, um, with the exception of some, there were a few bigger names, right? That there were negotiations for, but sure, um, it was a very small budget film, um, and I think that it's got such a killer soundtrack. Um, and yeah, I'm. I'm still just so excited to be on it. I think you made me say no is our best song of the year uh, for our our tiny little Spotify plays. Um, oh, good, good. Yeah, awesome. so it's like it's obviously it's a great song. People need to hear it, right? Right. Yeah. And I, I know the only reason it was on the list was because you like it. Um, I've been telling you I like that song for like five years. Like, you have. Thank yeah. you. I, I, and coming from you, like someone who is such a good singer songwriter it's always very high praise um i really hope this i think my goal this year is to make a song that you will say that's really that's really goddamn catchy like my my uh, goal this year is to get on another project and go hey Lindsay, let's like develop a song for this thing right like that's absolutely musical direction it's fun it's i miss playing on the stage a lot but um as far as being able to be a part of that team with your music and you know having beverage and the drinks have a poster being hung on a locker in the film like in yes. the middle of a shot um you know the music supervision thing was cool to like bring chicago into it because it was very much so an la team so mm -hmm. um it was cool to bring the chicago flavor in. that's so cool yeah it was like i mean truly an honor i was like completely shocked when it was like we're going to can i'm like whoa like Mm -hmm. um, I had, it was so funny because that day that we were playing, uh, I told my cousin this, uh, my German cousin, Judith, Judith, hello, Judith. Um, she is, uh, she was in con like the day that that was happening and they didn't oh, wow. see any movies or anything because they said it was really expensive, but they were just there um, and that they saw Harrison Ford and that was like, oh, like which I thought was very cool. But I was like, guess what, Judith, when you were there, like a movie playing one of my songs was, was, was playing like, and she just thought that was the coolest thing. But yeah, it was really like and super excited. I don't know. To me, it was like all, all of a sudden a bunch of things were colliding at once. And um, yeah, I just feel really cool that we were able to get so many people like guests, like we got Jose, we got Claire, we got um one of the act actresses uh, Maisie. Maisie. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was really yeah. gonna say I was gonna say Maisie and be like, I'm wrong. <laughs> Maisie was the second choice for my kid's name. So <laughs> but, but, yeah, you know, it was just a trip to see how much heart went into that project. Mm -hmm. And um I mean Jose had been developing that story since 2017, I believe. Um Yeah, it'd been a while or 2015, I think he said, something like that. Like, oh, it's, it, and just to see that all come to fruition and see all this talent come together. And like, I don't know, it's it, it's a cool process making a movie and I've always loved films. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was really weird and wild to be in, you know, to kind of be in one. And the only way that we really like can at this moment in time which is through music um right. it has been really inspiring to me and again it just like i mean i don't know about you and i'm i'm sure you probably feel the same but like i think being a chicago artist sometimes you get lost in the noise um there is so many there are so many bands playing every night all the time 
right and you know blowing up not blowing up uh opening not opening like and sometimes uh i mean i've been in my band for 15 years and which is amazing some, yeah and sometimes i you know we think what is the point but then other times i'm like oh this is wonderful like we uh, this year i went to a wedding of a guy who literally like we met through being in a band like and he invited us to his las vegas wedding hi john um but like it's just amazing like like this is the kind of shit i live for is being able to meet cool people like you um for being able to uh talk music collaborate um just i feel like that's that's it like i don't know my, i'm not yeah. religious but my yeah. like my whole like thing and like the only thing i tell all of is like well we're only here to like care about each other like take care of each other like right. that's it like there's no there's no book or doctrine for that that's what you get to do like and if you mm-hmm. don't do that then like yeah. what is what is you what is the point what um you, right and so right. It, i just really sometimes feel like being in the cell phones has like opened me up to lots of opportunities to put like like just to be with other people and to like make connections and shit and, and lifelong friends and and yeah yeah and that you know that goes you know, it's a great message, Lindsay, is like, you know, you never know what's going to happen when you form a band. Mm-hmm. And you I think a lot of people just that. assume we're going to get big. We're going to get lots of tail like and. <laughs> right now, it's it's not like that. It's 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 just like a lifelong journey if you do it the right way. Um, yeah. And you're with the right people. And it's like power in numbers, right? Community. Find your people. Those yeah. Are huge. Less and there's you know if you if you get all of that plus a little bit of luck it can go somewhere but if you don't then you kind of just still get to make good music like i don't know so me, like, it's just the process right it's like the it's it's getting better it's getting doing something different or yeah mm-hmm. like it, i don't know it's an addiction i guess a healthy addiction like working out or whatever um, <laughs> I don't know. It's to me, it's like, it's like a sport. It's, 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 it's athletic. It's, it's just, it's good for our brains. Um, I'll never stop doing it. <laughs> right. I like, it does, I don't, when you say that, like, I believe you when you say that. I don't care if anybody's fucking listening. Like, I really don't. Right. It's like, just put it out there and hopefully it speaks to someone. Of course, we're trying to communicate. Right. That's the point. But like, I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's like, I'll do all that first, but like, but it is true. Like, I don't know. The second I see someone mouthing the words to my song, I'll be on stage and make like find someone in the crowd doing it. And I'll be like, like, I'll immediately like be like, I forget what I'm doing. Like, that's the coolest thing. Some guy came up to me and he was like, I could hear your lyrics. And he like talked about how the lyrics meant something to him. And I was like, mm-hmm. what? Like in this grindcore band I'm in, like you can hear me? Like which, Lindsay, that's awesome. Like well, Yeah, it was really cool. It was um the song Less, which like literally goes like I don't know. It was the song that I wrote because I told Ryan that I love him so much and he was like, Love me less. And I was like, I don't know how to do that. And I refused to learn. And um and uh and and that was the song and literally the guy was like song title oh but it was cute because he was like i don't know the guy was very cute he was like like in my relationship i feel that Mm -hmm. and then later like his wife comes up and he's like hey this is the girl who sang that song and she was like yep yep he is definitely that guy and i'm like good to meet you dude like what's wrong with our spouses like <laughs> that's very no, silly. i think you two are hilarious and i think that you and ryan are just 
you know, from what I've witnessed on Instagram and just how you two are just so like goofy and funny. It's like Dude, he is he is was... my he's he's my insta muse. I will always film him doing dumb shit. It's so and... funny. your commentary, it's like you two are quite a team. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> and all I'm I'm telling you, Olive is like I don't know how it's happened, osmosis brain genetics but like she will play along like i did um recently i took her uh her lawn mower and i did that scene from sinister my favorite scene in sinister which is where they play the video called yard work and it's like kids like they're all like in the in the backyard doing yard work and then yeah, you just see and like it switches and it's like at night and you see someone just pulling a a, a lawn mower into the nothing like it's so dark you can all you can see is the grass in front of the lawnmower right. and then you see people's heads and it's just like ah. and 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 Ethan Hawke's like oh no oh no like that movie's so dark it's so dark it's so <laughs> yeah. creepy and then at the end it's like it's kids but like it, it was so funny I was in Olive's pen filming myself like using her toy uh lawnmower and ryan was on the ground <laughs> and i was going to run him over and olive was just kind of standing around i was not asking olive to participate in this in any way but by the time i came around to run over ryan's face olive was laying right next to him on the ground because she knew she knew what to do i was like i was like what like parents like daughters yeah, it's like she just knew she was like, I know where I need to be to make this video great. Here we go. Like, and my like my aunt Jill was like, don't run over my baby. And I'm like, dude, I didn't even ask her to do that. She just knew what to do. So yeah, I'm like, I'm so ready for Olive to be like, she's already like pretending to be dead. She's already like, I don't know. I'll say something like Olive, I need you to get up. I need you to get your clothes on. She'd be like, okay, poopy. <laughs> Okay, poopy. And I'll be I like, oh, to that you... energy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be like, Olive, what'd you do first? What'd you do at, at daycare today? I pooped in my pants and I peed in my pants. Oh. I pooped everywhere. And I'm just like, and I'll just play along with her. I'll be like, and what was your teacher thinking? Yeah. Did, did you have to clean that up? Did you have to clean all that up? And she's like, <laughs> no. I said, I don't care. And I pooped some more. And I'm like, raking stuff up. Yeah. He's just so insane. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I'm talking about I'm doing that thing. I'm doing that <laughs> I'm doing that thing. Yeah, talk about my kid. Oh, I like I love all those stories. I'm sorry, yeah. yeah it's it's I'm it's a new year. What what did we say yeah. we were gonna be? We're gonna be easy. We're gonna be easy with each other. We're gonna be easy. Yeah, we're gonna be easy on ourselves. We're gonna be easy on ourselves. We're gonna be love. easy on others. Love our and brothers so, and sisters and Yeah. Right. If I if I go off on my kids, everybody's just gonna take take a take a beat. Chill out. Yeah, yeah. Let me finish my damn story. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, no, but I mean, going back to just your family, I just, I, I always, uh, I don't know. One, Ryan made, Ryan made me, a, Ryan made me a drink. Like yeah. that's how easy Ryan's been. It's a very pretty drink too. It looks like it's it, called a, it's called a paper plane. Oh, apparently the guy at Violet Hour is famous for this. What's in it? Um, Aperol, whiskey, and Amaro. Very nice. It's I, a very it's it's very good. But Ryan's been mixing them since New Year's, so I think he's just really into it. We're just gonna make them until we don't have any more. Anyway, I'm sorry. You were saying something. Oh, I, no, I was just <laughs> just going back to Instagram. I don't know why I was talking about that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, uh, it's you know, we're going to be easy. Yeah, it, we're going to be easy on ourselves, easy on each other. It's 2024. Good vibes. Good Bring vibes. The new, we're going to get some great guests on this show. Yes. We're going to, everybody's going to see Departing Seniors and it's yes. awesome. And y'all should go see Departing Seniors. That's my big plug. Um, yeah. Wherever it it lands, we will tell you where yeah. it is. Yeah, we will, we will let you know. Um, and I promise, I promise to get on Instagram and be silly this year. Um, I just have, I just decided, I was like, 
let's let's 2023 let's take it let's take a minute and now i'm gonna hop on but yeah i i don't know why i was like so gung-ho for a minute and then i was like never mind i'm so tired but i have been saving every like horror related thing um for uh for the dagger cast insta so get ready to prepare to be sick of me oh yeah take it over Take it over. You're you're of Lindsay on the two th- on the uh, Instagram. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go off. Yeah, if you're yes. already a follower of the cell phones, you'll know. I don't I don't care. <laughs> I don't. Care. I will. I'll just do it. I'm looking forward to this. Good lord. Yeah. Well. We hey, wait! Before we do this, as the producer Jared. of this show, Lindsay. <laughs> Jared, I know, yeah. right? I know you're doing you're doing a bad job. I'm, I'm just doing kidding. a terrible job today. Hey, um, just like every other guest, what do you have to plug, bro? Oh, yeah. Well, Departing Seniors. And also, I guess I could plug this. Uh, the band I play in, Post Child, um, is playing at Livewire on January 12th. Livewire is still a place? It's still a place, and we're going to go play there. And, and we're not a heavy metal band, but come see us anyway. <laughs> and we'll be playing with uh, Time Thieves, who you may have heard of as oh, well yeah. as oh wait hold on i gotta pull it up there's a few other ones on there um but yeah we're looking forward to this nice we're, i thought i had it there's a couple other bands but uh oh there we go yes oh with also cyclone i and american standard oh at livewire january 12th 9 p.m i, I Next play week. like three shows a year now so I just got asked to do a show at Burlington on the 12th. I don't oh. know. I don't oh, think so we, we just might be competing that night. No, I, I don't <laughs> think we can do it, but I, I I do have to do my due diligence and ask the guys, but I'm pretty sure Ryan's going to be like next week. Hell no. Like he'll, he'll, he'll be, he'll be not into it. That's a little short now in his silence. So. It is a little short, but it's yeah. also like I don't know. I think it's Nonagon, and I really want to, I really want to play with them. But also, I'm like, yeah. that's a Friday where we'd have to drive up. And well, then, if you like, end up playing, and uh, I mean, geez, that, that would be hard. But maybe I could make your set. No, I wouldn't even ask you to. But yeah. we we will be. I I I told the men I need a band meeting soon to uh, figure out like what we want to do this year. Mm-hmm. Um, we liked being picky this year. We enjoyed like saying no to shows we can't do, but then saying yes to the ones that are like cool enough to do. You played um, a lot in 2023. I thought that was rad. I mean, we did like, I mean, for us, it was a very low clip. Like we, I think we did like five or six shows Two I had to cancel for COVID. Um, but yeah, I mean, it really wasn't much. It's more than what I did, honestly. I mean, you're yeah. you're gonna do so much though. I feel like I I can I can already see it happening because you're already like, hey, where can I play? Like, yeah, I'll get back to that after COVID. I don't know. I just went into my home studio. I just, just want to produce. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, like I think that's inspiring, right? To see you guys going out and playing, and it it as much as I am always like, oh, I'm gonna go to shows. I just never do because I live on the west side now and it's exactly like getting anywhere is just a pain in the ass um so and I'm just tired all the time right like I mean being in your uh, early yeah. 40s right um well, I mean one show one show we had to literally bring Olive because the grandparents couldn't take her nobody could take her so we had to like keep her with Uncle Garrett and be like sorry Uncle Gary you can't see our show mm. but you can see the sweet girl and he was like absolutely I, well, that was so nice of him too. Yeah, he's he's a sweetheart. I mean, he's the favorite uncle, like a hundred percent. Yeah. Um. But yeah. yeah but so it's... like sometimes it's it's very hard being in our forties and like trying to make it to shows. Be out late. Like Ryan and I have to do like a nap and a freaking you know an evening coffee. <laughs> Like oh yeah get... evening coffee is the best yeah, yeah. no it is my favorite because i'm like evening coffee i'm gonna be up like i'm gonna yeah. be ready the other night i had evening coffee like 8 p.m it was a great Ooh. yeah it was a great night 
Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Jared, for yeah, being Lindsay, um, for sure. my my production guy. And I don't know, you're the best. Thanks for doing this with me. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. <laughs> you scheduled yourself. All right, now I'm going to go edit this episode. Hold on. Let oh, right now. And that's the episode. Thank you so much for listening uh, or watching or whatever you're doing. I hope you're watching because you're, you're getting a good hair day. You really are. Um, but yeah, feel free to seriously drop me a line anytime. We would love to get hear some feedback. What do you want in 2024? What the hell do you want? Um, please let me know. I'd be really happy to hear kind of what you have to say. And yeah, again, happy new year. We'll see you soon. <laughs>